Hello, my name is Yu Ji Cheng. You can call me Louis. Um, so happy to be here to talk about the inconsistency security uh, vulnerability uh, reports. This is a joint work with my collaborators from UCAS, Penn State, UIUC, and JD.com. Suppose you are a security operations engineer. Your everyday work is to keep an eye of all kinds of vulnerability report websites to see if any software used in your company are buggy. In this way, you can patch them in time to lower security risks. Among these websites, you may frequently check NVD, National Vulnerability Database, maintained by US government. It includes security-related software flaws, uh, product names, impact metrics, and many other information. Uh, CVE is another important source. It is an industry standard for vulnerability exposure. It assigns each vulnerability a, CV, a unique ID called CVE number. Except these two websites, you can also find other pieces of reports from websites like Exploit Database, Security Focus, Red Hat, Bugzilla, or Bug Bounty programs from companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Google. All these websites use CVE number to refer vulnerability. One day, you will notice that a new bug with CVE number 2018-0852 is reported. This bug is in Microsoft Outlook, the email box used in your company. It's time to do something, right? Then you quickly go through the versions listed in NVD report and surprisingly find that the version used in your company 2007-SP3 is not listed. As a responsible security operations engineer, of course, you will find another report for double checking. Then you find one from CVE. This time you find that the version used in your company is clearly listed. NVD and CVE are actually telling inconsistent information. Which one should you trust? Quite confusing, right? <laughs> okay, you may ask, is such inconsistency prevalent or is only a corner case? You may also wonder what are the characteristics of inconsistent information, what causes inconsistency, and what are the security implications of inconsistency. To answer these questions, we need a measurement. In this paper, we do this measurement of vulnerability reports that, first of all, archived over decades, from 1999 to 2018, and secondly, across various websites, including CVE, Open War, Exploit Database, Security Focus, and many others. More importantly, our measurement is not limited to one specific category. Instead, we include 13 different categories that are listed by NVD. This is a very large scale measurement. It's almost impossible to complete this task manually. Therefore, we design Veeam, an automatic system that can extract vulnerable software names and versions from unstructured reports. I will describe the design of Veeam as the first part of my talk. As the second part of my talk, I will explain how we use extracted names and versions to quantify inconsistency. More importantly, I will show some interesting findings through our large-scale measurement. Let's get started. To quantify inconsistency information, we want to identify vulnerable software names and versions from unstructured reports written by human beings. Traditional NLP tools, however, don't work in our context. The main reason is the uniqueness of vulnerability reports. For example, this report says some versions of Ruby on Rails are vulnerable while others are not. Ruby on Rails, different from simply Ruby, is a newly introduced software at that time. Since we've never seen this software before, a dictionary-based method fails. Besides, in the report, both vulnerable and non-vulnerable versions are listed. We can hardly predefine a rule to distinguish them from each other. This requires context-sensitive analysis. Third, as you can see, this report is highly unstructured because it is written by a human. Regular expression doesn't have that capability to understand natural language. This is another report sample. In Windows Vista SP2 and the Windows Server 2008 SP2, the Windows Fault Library in .NET Framework, 
so many entities, we can use techniques that can only handle single entity. Another problem is vulnerability types are diverse. In this sample, we have memory corruption. In the last sample, we have an injection. Therefore, we can't use tools designed for one certain type to solve all different types. Actually, we tried one of such kind of tools and find that its recall is smaller than 40%. Based on above observation, we present Veeam. Veeam consists of two components. The first part is NERIE model. We use this model to identify vulnerable software names and versions. As displayed on the slides, the input of NERIE model is sentences in the report. We first import it to the NER model. NER model will output all software names and versions in the sentences, no matter vulnerable or non-vulnerable ones. In this example, Microsoft VB Script and Internet Explorer are names, 5.7 and 5.8, 9 through 11 are versions. Inside the model, we use recurrent net for identification, water character embedding for preprocessing, and gather tier to further improve accuracy. We don't have time for them, but you can find more details from our paper. After ident identifying names and versions, we shuffle and combine them each by each and feed them to RE model for pairing. The output of RE model is final results, the vulnerable software names and versions. Inside RE model, we use one hot encoding to present possible name version pairing. Then we input this encoding to a hierarchical attention network to predict which pairing is most likely to capture the relationship between software names and its corresponding versions. We train our NERA model for memory corruption to capture its specific characteristics. Then we use transfer learning to train models for other categories, for example, SQL injection. This not only shortens training cycle, but also overcomes inadequate training data of some vulnerability categories. To evaluate Veeam, we exhaustively collect more than 70,000 vulnerability reports over past 20 years. Part of these reports are structured from security trackers and security focus. The remaining are unstructured reports from exploit database, open war, and security focus forum. We manually labeled almost 2,000 reports as ground truth for training. We first trained NER IE model for memory corruption. In our ground truth data set, we have over 3,000 CV IDs. We trained the model with the ratio 811 for training, validation, and testing. Clearly see from the table that NER IE model performs well and we obtain near 100% accuracy. The state of the art is no higher than 90%. We also evaluate the transfer learning. We use memory corruption as teacher model and other categories as student models. For each student model, we have 145 reports at the ground truth data set and divide them with a ratio 1-1 for pre-training and testing. As we can see from the table, uh, transfer learning largely increases accuracy and does help solve inadequate data problem in some categories. Our papers list much more detailed results and you can find them there. After extracting vulnerable software names and versions using Veeam, we do large scale measurement. We first define our metrics of consistency. If two software names show more common words, we consider them as the same one. Here, Internet Explorer and the Microsoft Internet Explorer show two words and only one is different. So we consider them, as a, uh, consider them referring to the same software. For versions, we distinguish strict match from loose match. As the example below, we compare 1.1 1, 1 .1 with from 1.0 to 1.4. First, we look up the CP directory from NIST to convert version description to version list and then compare two lists. Since they are not, not exactly the same, strict match is obeyed. However, the latter covers the former, so they are loose match. We use these two metrics to quantify inconsistency and have some interesting findings. We found that inconsistency widely exists. 
we matched the various websites against NVD. We chose NVD as target because it is an official database maintained by US government. From the diagram, we can clearly see that under strict matching, the highest matching rate from extra database is no higher than 80%. Even if we use loose matching, consistency is still not 100%. Besides, we further studied why Exploit database overperforms other websites. We found that most of the Exploit database reports were posted after the NVD entries were created. We also studied matching rates of different vulnerability categories, and we found that no category can survive inconsistency. While the loose, ma losing, loose matching rates are similar, there are clear difference in the strict matching rates. For example, Categories such as SQL injection and file inclusion, the rightmost two have the highest strict matching rate. But the memory corruption, the leftmost one, is much lower. Further manual examination suggests that memory corruption uh, vulnerabilities are typically more complex than others, and thus requires a longer time to reproduce and validate. As a result, it is common for NVD to miss newly discovered vulnerable versions over time. We found that inconsistency behaves in overclaims and underclaims. Here is an example. We compare NVD's data against CVE. Overclaim means NVD includes some versions not archived in CVE. Underclaim happens when NVD misses some versions listed in CVE. Furthermore, we compared NVD with other five websites using loose matching metrics. Not surprisingly, both overclaims and underclaims are very common among different websites. Even if we take the union of the vulnerable versions across five websites and the CVE, NVD is still covering more versions. The more interesting observation is that NVD has underclaimed entries compared to each of the external information sources. This suggests that NVD is either suffering from delays to update the entries or fails to keep track of the external information. The consistency rate have never keeps constant. Instead, it varies over time. From the diagram, we can see that the average matching rate decreases slowly over the past 20 years. However, in recent three years, it has an obvious increasing pattern suggesting that things are getting better. We try to figure out some reasons causing inconsistency. One of the causes is typo. Clearly, in this example, security focus misspells the version by 0.6.8, while the correct version is 0.8.6. Humans' mistakes are one of the reasons. Another reason is most reports are seldom updated once created. We studied how NVE updates their reports and surprisingly find that around 66% reports have never been updated. In other words, even if you find another vulnerability version and report it to NVD, very likely they won't take any actions to your report. Like this example, in 2010, New vulnerable versions are added to security focus. However, NVD still view 1.16 as the only vulnerable version. So what's the security implications of information inconsistency? To answer this question, we did a case study. We collected seven real-world vulnerabilities covering 47 reports from five websites. We built a team of three security researchers to manually examine in total 185 versions. It took us four months. Among these versions, only 64 versions are confirmed vulnerable. More importantly, we find 12 newly discovered vulnerable versions which have never been archived. This table shows more details of case study. We compared the ground truths established by manual verification against NVD. The red ones in the table represents overclaim, while blue ones represents underclaim. The green ones means both situations exist. It's clear that underclaim can leave vulnerable software systems unpatched because some buggy versions are not recorded. Underclaim can waste significant manual efforts for security and analysts in reproduction. 
Besides, we further compare ground truth with intersection and the union of five websites. The problem still exists. OK, so I would like to draw conclusions and list some open challenges as my talk's closing remark. In this paper, we design and develop a Veeam to extract vulnerable software names and versions. Veeam can also be used in application scenarios like online monitoring to report inconsistency in time. Then we apply Veeam for a large-scale measurement, which demonstrates that inconsistency information is highly prevalent. Finally, we did a case study and showed that inconsistency information has serious security implications. To resolve inconsistency, we can standardize vulnerability report procedure. For example, add one more step to union information from different sources to eliminate inconsistency. Given that manual verification is not scalable, the second challenge is how to fully automate the vulnerability verification. Thanks for listening. Uh, we have open sourced our code and data. For further questions, please contact us. Thank you again. And any questions? All right, we have a few minutes for questions. Okay, I will, I will start with one. Mm -hmm. So you notice these inconsistencies, and I'm wondering how many of these do you, can you tell are gonna actually cause problems for humans versus just the machine learning algorithms? Mm -hmm. When you went through and looked at those inconsistencies. Oh, so, okay, can you say it again? Sure, so, so you notice these inconsistencies. Some of them are pretty minor, and they might mm -hmm. trick up like an exact string match. Some of them were probably significant enough that yeah. they might also throw off a human mm -hmm. who couldn't figure out what product they were looking for. And uh -huh. I was wondering if you know, if you have a sense of kind of how much fall in each of those two buckets. Oh, so you say that the two kinds of categories. One is more serious than another, and you want, but we, do not, uh, we don't do that kind of uh, con 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 communications. But I think this is, uh, because uh, if we want to do such kind of measurement, we need to go know the ground truth, and uh, we need to measure which uh, which software is like more important than others, so that we, we can do such kind of uh, measurement. But we will uh, do this as our future work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I will ask one last one then. Cool. <laughs> um, so. I get the sense that some of this data is being copied around between different systems. Mm -hmm. And as that data gets copied, inconsistencies arise. Do you have a sense from looking at that, where are the kind of informal sets of ground truth that things are being copied from the most, and which of these are just places they get copied into by looking at this data? Yeah, so uh, some data is copied from one website from, to another website. And uh, well, what is the uh, ultimate source of this information? But I think. I don't think there is such kind of automated automa source because some uh, developers will report the versions on like uh, uh, Bugzilla or, or, or directly report it to NVD. So I, I don't think there is such kind of source. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's thank Lewis one more time.